All right. Well, there we go again. Our first caller did a wonderful job of exemplifying the typical Muslim caller who uh, does questions that we're asking Muslims. And instead of uh, accurately representing his own religion, uh, he is either ignorant of his own religion or, and I think perhaps there's a mixture of these two, he's intentionally deceptive. Uh, you know, things that he said, for example, uh, you know, you, you took it apart, but he said, oh, remember this. Islam, he said, Islam is a peaceful religion. But then he contradicted himself. All this violence that you see that we do is because of you. It's everyone else's fault. You it's Christians. Fault. So you're provoking you Christians on the program cause us to do all this violence. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what violence? Well, see, see, you violence, know, we've right? only been on TV since uh, June of 2009. I think there was a little bit of Islamic violence before. Yeah. I don't know, even before the other programs that are similar to this. But anyways, there's much that we could answer there. Before we go to the next caller, Sam, would you yeah, want to add something? I want to add just a few passages, because he said he follows the Quran alone, yeah. which is a very inconsistent position to hold to. But we can discuss that, Lord Jesus willing, in future sessions. Why, although the Quran cl claims to be perfect and com complete, you cannot make sense out of it unless you have recourse to the Hadith. Now... Uh, according to chapter 9, verse 29, it says, Fight those who do not believe in Allah nor the last day. It doesn't say fight those who oppress you. Fight those who attack you. Fight those who don't believe like you. you. We've been quoting that passage over and over and over again, providing the historical context, the interpretation of scholars. We are not misquoting it. It says uh, what it says, and it means what it says. Fight those who do not believe in Allah nor the last day, nor forbid what Allah and His Messenger have forbidden, nor uphold the religion of truth, even if they are from the people of the book, until they pay the jizya and feel humiliated. Go read any exposition by any Muslim on that passage. It says that this passage commanded Muslims, if they have the upper hand and the military prowess to do so, subjugate Jews and Christians in order to base, debase them, belittle them, humiliate them, and disgrace them. That's the exact words of Ibn Kathir. As far as Muslims living at peace with, with those that they live with, yes, if they're outnumbered and they can't subjugate the group, then they have to seek for peace until they get the upper hand. And here's what the Quran says, when the Muslims have the upper hand and can impose their will on us. Chapter 47, verse 35. Chapter 47 of the Quran, verse 35. So be not weak and ask not for peace while you are having the upper hand. Allah is with you and will never decrease the reward of your good deeds. Notice, when they are uppermost, they have the military prowess, the money, the means to subjugate and attack a group, to bring them under the rule of Islam. The Quran says, don't seek peace. Don't coexist with them. Dominate them in fulfillment of chapter 9, verse 29. And finally, chapter 5, verse 51, what does it say about befriending Jews and Christians? O oh, you who believe, take not the Jews and Christians for friends, awliya. They are friends one to another. He among you who takes them as friends is one of them. If a Muslim befriends me, he's like me, that means he's outside the fold of Islam, therefore his blood can be shed with impunity. Now some Muslims get ingenuous saying, no, the word awliya doesn't mean friends, it comes from wali, it means protector. Although the word wali can mean protector, depending on the context, it can mean friends. And according to the Muslim expositors, and I have them in front of me, they translate it as friends. Do not befriend Jews and Christians. To further prove that the word awliya can mean friends, in Surah 10, verse 62. Chapter 10, verse 62 says this, Lo, verily the friends of Allah, awliya Allah, are those on whom fear cometh not, nor do they grieve. Notice, Allah has awliya. They are the awliya Allah, meaning the friends of Allah. Are you telling me that these are the protectors of Allah? That Allah needs protection from them? you got to be kidding me. I know you don't mean that. Which proves that awliya can mean friends. And according to the Muslim expositors, chapter 5, verse 51, saying, Do not befriend Jews and Christians. Not just don't take them as protectors. And even if they meant protectors, let me finish with the final point, because I know we have a flood of calls. And we want to return to the subject at hand, the corruption of the Quran. Even if it meant don't take them as protectors, then I want to understand for the life of me, why did Muhammad send Christians to Abyssinia to seek the protection of a Christian? If this is, means do not take them as protectors, please, expl please explain to me, why did Muhammad send Muslims to seek asylum and protection 
from a Christian leader. Mm -hmm. However you interpret this passage, you have problems, and Muhammad was inconsistent. Yes, and uh, I think I can relate it back to the topic at hand, because the real issue we want to we wanna look at is, why is there such a massive difference between what Muslims believe and what the case actually is? So think about what, this, uh, what, what our Muslim friend here was saying. Muslims are the most peaceful people in the world, yet we see violence around the world in the name mm -hmm. of Islam every single day. Uh, Islam just teaches you to be friends with everyone. Islam yeah. specifically commands you not to be friends with, with other people and yeah. that you're supposed to fight them. Uh, Islam teaches that you should greet everyone in love and Christianity is better. No, it's actually the exact opposite. Christianity tells you to greet everyone in love while, while Muhammad himself told you not to. You force people up against the wall on the side of the road. Uh, and of course, we have uh, the Quran. Muslims believe, well, the Quran has been perfectly preserved down to the letter, down to the punctuation mark, and all of the evidence is absolutely wrong. I, I want to ask, do you... Do you investigate anything? Do you actually go out and read anything? Do you just believe what you hear from all your Muslim friends or from, from your Muslim parents? Do you actually look at your sources? Because we read your sources. Yeah. We study your sources carefully because we want to be accurate when we say something about Islam. Muslims, at least the vast majority of Muslims I talk to, it never occurs to them to actually go to their sources to make sure that what they're saying about their religion is accurate. It also never occurs to them to go to our our sources to make sure that what they're saying about our religion yes. is accurate. They just say whatever they've heard all their lives and they assume that it's true. Mm -hmm. And there is never, ever any concern for knowing the truth. And those that do show a concern for the truth, well, they become Christians. And David, they, uh, remember the claim is you guys are ignorant. You don't know anything. And yet we are actually quoting the Quran, we are quoting the Hadith, uh, people like Maududi, all of these orthodox scholars say that the Quran is actually incomplete as a religious code without the Sunnah of Muhammad. As they've said, you're basically a heretic if you just try to pull that Quran only junk. But anyways, uh, we're ignorant and you guys quoted copiously and always doing this program from the Quran, from the Hadith, from the Sira literature, everything, and this guy did not quote one Islamic source. Mm -hmm. But we're ignorant, and he's right. I don't think and, he could. I don't think yeah, he could no, quote a source. Well, he doesn't know what it the, is. The, the best, you know, we, we hope better, but the best we can tell so far from the Muslim callers in this show the last few months is Islam is a religion of pride, arrogance, and ignorance. Is that the case? That's the, that's the kind of callers we keep getting. I hope we have a different kind right now. Let's take the next caller right now. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. 